Excellencies, distinguished speakers and participants, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me take this opportunity to express my sincere appreciation to Mr. Chiu Yong, President of Tsinghua University and Chairman of the World Peace Forum, and Mr. Yen Xie Tong, Secretary General of the World Peace Forum. It's good to see you again, Excellency. Um, I also would like to express my deepest thanks for inviting me uh, to be here at this annual conference. This year, I certainly cannot think of a topic that is as timely and relevant than that which are, we are addressing today. Surely, in the light of the current state of the world, revitalizing global multilateralism is obviously uppermost in all our minds. <clears throat> May I also take this opportunity to offer my sincerest congratulations on the auspicious occasion of the Sanitary of CPC on July 1st. 2021. Indeed, the progress and prosperity that China has achieved in this span of time is unprecedented in recent history. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the challenges we currently face as global community are also unprecedented in many ways. We have all gone through what has been described as the VUCA world in the past years. VUCA, V-U-C-A, stand for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Within nations, we have witnessed such global mega trends such as aging society, urbanization, rising expectation of the middle class, the rapid pace of innovation, the existential threat of climate change, and mounting pressures on sustainability. At a global level, we have seen how the ties of deglobalization have brought forth these contents, fueling unilateralism extreme nationalism and protectionism. Significantly, the scourge of COVID-19 and its devastating impact on health security and world economy have intensified the sense of vulnerability and fragility in the VUCA world. All these trends and developments have subject multilateralism under immense stresses and strains in many ways. First, in 2020, while COVID-19 pandemic ravaged its way across national borders, international cooperation took a back seat. In the early days of the outbreak, countries were confined to fending for themselves, resorting to unilateral measures, such as closing off borders, banning the export of much needed medical equipment and supplies. The role of the WHO became paralyzed and polarized. The situation contrasted sharply with what transpired during the SARS outbreak in 2003. At that time, ASEAN and Chinese leaders and international organizations decided to meet in Bangkok, Thailand, with only seven days advance notice in a demonstration of political will and leadership and adopted a common approach and specific measures to all cooperate in the field of pandemic. As a result, it calmed the sense of fear and panic, and the situation was eventually resolved in 60 days. Of course, the scale and intensity of COVID-19 is definitely greater. Still, international cooperation, which should have been spearheaded by the United Nations, particularly the World Health Organization, was minimal until months had elapsed. Secondly, on the positive side, we witnessed regional organizations such as ASEAN in Southeast Asia, the SARC in South Asia, the EU, the African Union, and the OAS, among others, filling in the void, taking on responsibilities to rally regional cooperation, ranging from exchanging information, helping regional member states by providing medical supplies, and even existing in setting up funds to help neighboring countries whose economies had been hard hit by the pandemic. Indeed, the role of and efforts of regional organizations help in shoring up multilateralism and provide the impetus for international cooperation amongst regional states working in partnership with civil societies. Third, I believe that the constructive engagement of the major powers with regional organizations can also help open up new pathways for multilateral cooperation. This is very much the case with the cooperation extended by China. Notably, His Excellency President Xi Jinping, Premier Li Keqiang, and State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi 
held virtual conferences with leaders and ministers of regional groupings to offer medical and economic assistance. China Row went a long way in what I call connecting the dots, promoting multilateral cooperation across regions in the VUGA world. Fourth, I also believe that we are deeply concerned by the repercussions on the multilateral international order of the intensification of trade, investment, financial and technology competition between the world's two largest economies. The strategic competition, which may have many have referred to as war, has reinforced the fears generated since the Trump administration that we are heading towards a technology decoupling. The decoupling uh, of technology has disruptive effects on regional and global supply chain, creating a fragmented global economy and impacting on the economic growth of many countries, especially in the developing world, where the lives and livelihoods of peoples are already vulnerable to external factors. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, given these observations, how then we can revitalize the multilateralism? I have the following suggestions as food for thought. First, as seen during the COVID-19 crisis, regional organizations proved to be an anchor of multilateral cooperation. We must therefore continue to support open and inclusive regional cooperation in all fields, political, trade, investment, health, and so forth. As an example, at a time when the multilateral trading system under WTO remains at an impasse, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or the RCEP, RCEP agreed among 10 ASEAN countries and China, Japan, South Korea, Australia, and New Zealand is to be welcomed. Hopefully, India will decide to join ASEP in the near future, thus making the ASEP, RCEP, the largest free trade area in the world. Furthermore, President Xi Jinping's policy in agreeing to join the Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership, the CPTPP, and his initiative in advancing or advocating the Free Trade Agreement of Asia and the Pacific, FTAAP or the FTA, will certainly further advance the cause of free and open global trade, which is key pillar of multilateralism. Enhancing the role of regional cooperation and strengthening the links between and among regional organizations need to be pursued if we are to revitalize multilateralism at the global level. More than ever, we need to connect the dots. And as we was the case during the COVID-19 pandemic, China can and must play a vital role in connecting the dots, in forging links among regional groupings and initiatives. Promoting urban and inclusive regionalism are indeed the essential building blocks of effective multilateralism. And in this regard, it is in the common interest of all the major powers to work together in connecting the dots. Secondly, connecting the dots also apply in the peace and security area as well. It is imperative that the major powers utilize the existing regional architecture to promote multilateralism. For example, in Southeast Asia, ASEAN's network of dialogue partnership, particularly the ASEAN Regional Forum or the ARF, which have been established for over 20 years now, comprising 27 countries, should serve as a platform for engagement with countries in other regions to advance multilateral dialogue and cooperation on regional and global issues of peace and security. In a larger context, powerful groupings in the world should not become exclusive clubs. It is necessary to reach out to other groupings and countries. The G7, for example, should open up dialogue with non-members, be they G20, the BRICS, and other regional political and economic organizations. Multilateralism works best when all voices of all countries, large or small, powerful or not so powerful, are heard and heeded. It is through these efforts in connecting the dots in economic, political, and security fields that we can help to bring about what I would call the multilateralization of regionalism. 
During COVID-19, we witnessed the regionalization of multilateralism. To my mind, both regionalism and multilateralism are mutually reinforcing. Third, I would like to note that the Belt and Road Initiative, the BRI, the Itai Ilu, is another important vehicle for international cooperation. Together with the free trade arrangements that I have referred to earlier, the physical and digital connectivity under the Belt and Road Initiative we open up new opportunities for economic growth and development. When people can travel, goods transported across boundaries with ease, when transactions are made through digital technology within seconds, we all stand to benefit from the increased prosperity. It is to be further noted that at present, in the midst of geopolitical and geoeconomic shifts, proposals have been brought to the fore under the free and open Indo-Pacific region the Build Back Better World initiative, and so forth. All of these initiatives are to be welcomed, provided that they involve constructive competition among the proponents. Regrettably, it would be counterproductive if these initiatives are intended to obstruct rather than to compete. Constructive competition can help prevent multilateralism, since many projects can help to mobilize resources and international cooperation in a common complementary way. On the other hand, obstructive competition only will lead to fragmented multilateralism and fragmented globalization, a situation that can only work against revitalizing multilateralism. Fourth, as a result of the COVID-19 crisis, I envisage a new chapter of international cooperation emerging, cooperation on food, health, and medicine among countries and the private sectors, including civil societies and research institutes, will be given greater priority. Furthermore, the new normal defined by digital technology, we expand not only the practice of working from home, but working from everywhere around the globe. New protocols, especially social distancing, has fundamentally changed the way we interact with one another whether in sports, business, tourism, and daily life. Virtual connectivity will certainly play a bigger role on matters requiring international cooperation and in shaping the directions of multilateralism in the coming decade. Fifth, climate change and environmental degradation is another area where international cooperation is urgently and crucially needed. And I fully agree with Excellency Von Rompuy on this. It is only through our concerted efforts as a global community, that we will be able to slow down the disastrous impacts on our environment and the lives of the generations to come. We all have a shared responsibility in working individually and multilaterally. If one country adopts a sound policy on environmental protection, but the neighboring countries adopt policies that ignore the harmful impact on the environment, we all stand to lose. The green economy and the low carbon society can only be successfully implemented if they are carried out through multilateral cooperation. Sixth, in addition to connecting the dots between regionalism and multilateralism, multilateral institutions and rules themselves must also be reformed to reflect the realities of the world transformed since the institutions were founded after World War II. Increasingly, the threat to our common peace and security these days emanate from the non-security or the non-traditional security sources. Definitely in the global health crisis, such as the COVID-19 pandemic, the UN, the United Nations, must strengthen its capacity and readiness to take urgent and collective actions. This requires mobilizing of resources of the entire UN system and institutions and joint efforts of the international community as a whole. The principal task inevitably falls on the role of the UN Security Council. This means the UNSC should redefine the scope of challenges to international peace and security under the UN Charter to include these new challenges, particularly pandemics. In particular, the role and mission of the World Health Organization will need to be strengthened so that it is well equipped with knowledge, research capability, and funding in order to take on its leading role in prevention 
treatment and rehabilitation. We should safeguard the WHO from politicization as part of the reform process. Debate on WHO reform should also be inclusive with participation of stakeholders and relevant uh, civil societies. And finally, seventh, to revitalize multilateralism, a stable US and China relation is the key. It is incumbent upon all of us to reiterate the importance of the avoidance of conflict and confrontation and constant consultation on issues where views differ and diverge. We must also exert our utmost endeavors to minimize the areas of conflict and augment the areas of cooperation and collaboration. On the part of ASEAN, our approach has always been to build up from the lowest hanging fruits, expanding areas less prone to conflict and where cooperation yields mutual benefits, leading to win-win solution. We all should be cognizant that differences are normal and are to be managed and not to be inflated into conflict and confrontation. And I have no doubt that multilateral dialogue and consultation in various fora and format is the way forward toward a win-win solution for all. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the VUCA world, the world of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ubiquity will continue. However, it is through multilateral cooperation and not the unilateral actions that we can make VUCA world manageable, peaceful, and prosperous. It is incumbent upon all of us to work together and act together to guard against volatilities and certainties in a world in transition. Hopefully, by revitalizing multilateralism, the world would be less complex and more manageable, and the ambiguous situation confronting us will be clearer and more transparent. To go in the opposite direction would only undermine multilateralism and aggravate the VUCA world, the result of which would be the world that is too volatile, too uncertain, too complex and too ambiguous to the detriment of all of us. And definitely, that should not be the world we all are looking for. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Uh...